Welcome to the Real Business Women of Charlotte. On today's show, we have Director from the Women's Business Center, Natalie Williams, with us. Natalie, welcome to the Real Business Women of Charlotte, episode number one. Thank you for the invitation. I am very excited to be here with you guys. And, you know, around about two years ago, I came up with this idea called the Real Business Women of Charlotte, where I have been in business for over 24 years. And two and a half of those were with a international organization that helps women network around the world. And what I saw during that time is women forget to have real talk. We forget to have real talk with each other of how hard it is to start a business. You know, whether or not you've inherited a business or whether or not you have from ground up. And we forget to have that real talk because we wear so many masks. Mm -hmm. And also about life balance you know, with our families. For example, you know, for me, when, you know, I was raising my children, I was raising them, you know, with a business. If one of them was sick, I had to stop everything and take care of the children. And then that left me out of self-care. So that is how I came up with the Real Business Women of Charlotte. And again, I want to thank these two beautiful ladies for being my co-host. Barbara, thank you. LaShonda, thank you. Thank you so, so much. So Natalie, the first question that I want to ask you is when you agreed to come and be on the Real Business Women of Charlotte and you work with women all over, what intrigued you to come here with Real Talk? Um, one of the things that intrigued me, a couple of things intrigued me, first and foremost is being with you three ladies. That is, I think, I honor you guys. I think you guys do a wonderful job at what you do as far as your business is concerned. The other thing that intrigued me was being able to share a part of my story and to encourage women because this is a great platform to do that. So I was very encouraged to be here with that. Um, you and your staff do, do an outstanding job and you're providing resources and tools to help women in business there to, for their business to be sustainable and profitable. And uh, I'm one that comes out of that out of that environment. And so really always being on your toes of research and to provide to these women so their business can be successful uh, through that process or through your growing um, growing through that process of research have you ever found yourself to make a, a bad business decision or career decision um i would say actually no mm -hmm. the reason why i say that is because i know that i have a purpose in life and that my journey that I'm on right now um, has given me the opportunity to learn from every mistake that I have made, bad or good. So to take something and say, for example, if I say, oh, I shouldn't have never hired that individual or I should have um, left a job a little sooner would be to say that um, I didn't learn the lessons of endurance or that I wouldn't have and learned the lesson of um, team building or employee retention. So although the decisions in my life have been, um, some of them have been very testy, you know, I've overlooked on promotions and things of that nature, they have been what they are to make me who I am. Mm. So I don't regret any of the decisions because I wouldn't be who I am today. That reminds me of some stuff I was reading about your background and in your bio. You had things like processes and procedures, positive and effective work environment. And that struck me as kind of a theme you seem to be very systematic mm. you know in your approach in your own business <laughs> <laughs> and it's how okay. you coach like others. That too. <laughs> this is your reflection of what you know what you're giving out it really does feel yeah. like that and I just wonder in the women that you're helping especially those who come with that passion mm -hmm. right they have a passion for yes. their business is are those systems in place or is that something that if you're just starting out or even a few years in the business that you really have to focus on so for the most part, I would say 85% of the customers that we service, they don't have the systems in place. We are very passionate about our product. We can work around and our business instead of working you know, on the business. So um, as a matter of fact, we're actually doing a class that we're rolling out for 12 months, which uh, Wells Fargo is our sponsor called The Game Changer. And it is all about systems and processes developing the internal systems, processes, and structures for your business. It's a 12-month curriculum. Is it meet once, once a month? Or? They meet twice a month. They're gonna meet twice a month, and it starts, um, we have our orientation December the 13th. We've got 15 women who are in the program, 14 really. And then um, it starts January. So it's, it's about commitment and intention. So I'm deliberate 
in what I do. Um, and it, I think it comes across that way. I'm intentional about making sure that I am making an impact no matter who the person is that I meet, no matter where we are, whether it's a client of mine that's sitting across from me or with someone in the grocery store. Mm -hmm. I have yeah. one follow-up qu question for that one. Yes, yes. Is that because we're seeing women struggle in that area? Because we know we hear that so many entrepreneurs may be in business mm -hmm. for two to three years and then it fizzles out. Mm -hmm. Is that what's missing? That is, that is the key that's missing. So you have the systems and processes, those things are missing. And then some of the women, um, financing. Financing is a big key. That's one of the biggest elements that is missing in businesses because we don't often have the opportunity to get the access to capital because we don't know beforehand what we need to know. And so we'll quit our jobs or we'll try to transition over. And what happens is when we do that, we have no income coming in and that makes it even worse. So oftentimes I spend some time telling women go back to work, take another part time job, because if you're going to get traditional lending, you have to have some income coming in. So when we don't know what we don't know is what really what hurts us. Um, so the financing is the key. The plan, there's no plan. So we have a vision, but we don't have it written down as a plan. So I would just take, for example, um, the goals and objectives that we're working on right now with the game changer. Um, we had to go back a couple of times to a couple of people to make sure that those goals were specific enough. And so I think what happens is that we'll say things like, oh, I want to increase my revenue, but we don't know how to tie that to our operations. Yeah. We don't know how that aligns with our processes. And then we skip the major part, which is the budget. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, I have an, another question for you. Uh -huh. When you're working with these women that you work with, and, um, you know, like I said, I was two and a half years working with women okay. in networking, and what is the number one thing that you see that women wear the mask on and don't want to have the real talk with themselves? Um, I would say it would be imposter syndrome. Mm. Really? Wow. Yeah, I have women come in and for some reason we feel like we are not enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we wear that no matter what. I have people with PhDs, you know, um, and it doesn't matter how many degrees we get, yeah. we just still feel inadequate. Yes. 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 So we wear this that I know it all type of thing when we don't and we're afraid that people to let people know what we don't know. Right. So one of the things that I always tell people when they walk in the door is that you get what you get with me. I'm just trans very transparent. Mm -hmm. And I try to encourage women to be their true authentic self yeah. and to accept what you don't know. And then it's okay that you don't know that. And I think that's really key. When, when somebody understands that you don't have to know everything, it's like a breath of fresh air comes into their body like, okay, I really don't need to know all of this. Mm -hmm. So you don't start feeling that guilt and walking around with that on top of you. Yeah, and and, and you're right. I've seen a lot of that too. Um, you know, women, and that's reason with the real talk yes, that yes. I wanted to have it because what happens with us as women, we put on all these masks. We don't want, for example, Lashonda to know what's really going on in the background of my business. She needs to know that I'm yep. making all this money and I'm successful, you know, and my kids are perfect and my kids are, yep. you know, everything and I'm taking care of myself, but deep down inside, we're not, we're killing ourselves. We're killing ourselves. We're killing ourselves. And I think really with, with the real talk, um, once more women see mm -hmm. and hear, right. it allows them you know, to open up, right? right? Mm -hmm. So um, some of those failures are really successes. They are they steps are actually, are to exactly success, the right? Exactly. It's long, exactly, yeah. exactly. So again, think starts with the mind. It's, it's right. a mindset. mindset. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that, and that, to your point, which is really good, that's why I say I don't regret any decision. And someone, I went to a conference in D.C. just a couple weeks ago, and that was the exact same question. One of the questions was, if you could change anything in your life or about your career, what would you change? And my response was, I would change nothing. Mm -hmm. Because if I change everything or any one little thing, it still wouldn't make me who I am today. Right. I needed yes. every lesson. I needed every no to the promotion. Mm -hmm. I needed every boss that was crazy. I needed um, every person who told me I couldn't do something. Um, even though it hurt, is definitely what I needed because it made me today. And when I was driving, you know, the other day and here today, I was thinking, wow, I really can honestly say that I love myself today. Mm -hmm. yeah. That wasn't always my answer wow. before. Mm -hmm. But today I can actually say that, you know, I'm really happy with who I am. Yes. 
and it became because of the journey that brought me to this place. Wow. Yeah. And so to, uh, that's a great statement and to especially a lot of our young professionals now, I mean, they're starting business at a very early age. I, 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 as a matter of fact, I did at 16, started my business, but totally different way of doing business today. But a lot of our young women are starting a business and for them to understand that the new definition of success our failures, you know, mm -hmm. some of our failures are steps mm -hmm. to our success and not feel like you've got to step out there to look big and do big and be right mm -hmm. and be perfect. Right. It, it, uh, you have to allow yourself to stumble mm -hmm. um, some. So very good statement. Thank you for being authentic on that. One of the things that um, this conference, the Diversity Women's Conference um, that's run by Dr. Sheila Robinson, great conference mm -hmm. on diversity and inclusion. Um, come, some of the couple, the um, key leaders, one of the things they said was that if you, if your dream doesn't scare you, then it's not big enough. Yes, yes. If you don't have setbacks, then you're not growing. Exactly. So you have to expect those particular types of setbacks, even though, you know, we ask for growth and we want it. But when it happens, we don't necessarily wrap our arms around it because we don't know how to receive it. When I got let go from my very first job, I thought, oh my God, this is going to be the end of the world. You know, I didn't know how to handle it. And my husband kept saying, stop thinking that it was you. And I was like, oh, it's me, it's me. He was like, stop it. And I didn't know how to handle it until I had to put myself around it and just accept, okay, you know what, this is a setback but you can get back out there and keep it going. And so the same thing with business. Yeah. You know, you're gonna have those periods of setback because maybe you didn't define this area a little bit or this area in your business, but you'll have setbacks and it's okay. It's okay and we just need to know. That's why, you know, what we stand for, like the Heart of the Women's Conference that we do every year, it's all about women understanding that they are not alone. Yeah. That's the goal. I think this platform um, provides a great you know, stepping stone for women to understand. You're not alone. You do have sisters. I mean, real true sisters yes. that are your sister, yes. you know, your mm -hmm. keepers, you know what I mean? Yes. That take can take care of you, that are aligned and like-minded. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, and you're talking about that with the um, feeling alone. It took me a long time to figure that out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I realized, and I was in a mastermind group with women, and I realized, you know what? None of us have it together. Mm -hmm. We've just not allowed ours mm -hmm. to each other to know, to be real with To be real. okay. Like there's okay. permission. Okay. Yes. In fact, you need to understand mm -hmm. that we don't have it together. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that we're talking about you loving yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and if I think this would be a great time to introduce part of your story mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how much we should, as women, bring all of that into our business. We can't wear separate masks, mm -hmm. as you're saying, because we, we don't operate that way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So tell us about how your personal story, a little bit that you feel comfortable sharing, mm -hmm. what that is and how that inspires you to now help so many other women. So um, part of things that, I have a couple of things that really inspire me, and then it will be part of um, some of the story. What was the turning points in my life, the things that helped me to turn around. Um, and I hope I don't get really emotional because I am an emotional being. But one of them is, <laughs> yeah, one of them is actually um, the birth of my son is one of the turning points. When I was pregnant with him, I, he was diagnosed with Down syndrome and my doctor told me to abort him. And so um, <clears throat> I didn't listen to her, obviously, and I had him and he turned out to be very healthy. The other turning point in my life was my, the birth of my granddaughter. She was a preemie and I almost lost her and my daughter when my daughter went into preeclampsia, straight in preeclampsia for her first birth. And it was really traumatic for her. The other turning point, which really makes me really emotional and I don't know why, but my daughter lost one of the births that she had, which was a grandson of mine. So that was a turning point for me. And then um, my marriage. I had some, you know, hiccups in my marriage. That was also a turning point for me. And then, of course, when I was first um, going out, when I, when I was in high school, I used to go out with a guy, and we went out for about three years. And two and a half of those years, I was abused. I was physically and sexually abused by him. Um, he would force himself on me. You know, we would literally have fights in the street. And because of our my area of where I grew up in, um, it didn't dawn on me that I was a victim of anything because we would see that pretty much common for a lot of women. You know, um, I was in a almost quote unquote, like a quote, a cult. It was called the 5% Nation and it was a very submissive um, group where you, the woman was submissive to the guy. And so um, 
The one day that that turned for me was my father had said something to me, which was, I didn't even know what he was saying, really. And he said, you know, I'm really proud of you. I'm glad you're not like a harlot in the street or whatever. And I was like, what's a harlot? So I had to go to the Bible and I had to go to the book and I read. And I was like, okay, okay. So he does value my dad. And I don't know where it came in my life that I felt like I was disvalued, that I would allow a person to do that to me but um, for two and a half years it was a rough two and a half years I nearly almost died um, the day that I decided to leave he decided that he wanted to literally bang me in my head into the ground and it was um, it was very scary because back in those days if you didn't go out with this kind of a person you know people would it, it was just a community type of situation craziness and I just remember laying on the ground when he was banging my face to the ground, one side of this spot hitting the concrete and the other was his hand hitting the side of my face. I just remember calling out to God and I said, if you get me up from here, I promise you, I will serve you for the rest of my life. And that was my promise and I vowed to keep it. And he got me up. Um, a cousin came around the corner and she saw me being banged. She cried out, stop hitting her, you know, this, that, and the other. And I got up and I went home. The embarrassing moment was when I had to go home and show my mom, my face, and my brothers. And Because I'm, I'm one of six and I'm the baby. So it was very hard for my family at the time. But I actually lived through it. And so um, this is where I realized that there has to be something for me in this life. But I didn't know it all together at that point I just realized there had to be something for me so Natalie if you know you know I've went through the same thing and you know I've spoke about that what advice if someone's listening now that's going through what you went through what real talk would you give her right now or him men also yeah, yeah men also that's oh, true yeah. the first thing I would really say is um Gather yourself around your family. The, the abuse happens from isolation. The moment your um, person or whoever the individual is can isolate you and start to tell you the stories and the lies, um, that's when you become this person in this group by yourself that you can't, you really can't breathe. And you feel like the whole world is looking at you and you feel like everything that you do is wrong or that if you say something, you know, people will either look at you funny or laugh at you. So the first thing is um, just get rid of that myth. Mm -hmm. Get rid of that myth that people are thinking about you in a negative way because there are people out there that definitely want to help you. So open your mouth and say something um, and reach for the people that are closest to you because for me what happened was I got so distant from my family that I didn't trust my family and I ended up trusting him. And so it became a war between my parents and them telling me that they loved me and me listening to this guy. I was young, I was like 14 years old, that you know, um, oh, he loves me more, there's no way you guys can, you know. And so those lies start to just infiltrate and you start to distance yourself more and more. So the first thing I would say is to really rally around the people that love you, no matter what your family looks like, family first. Absolutely. Yes. Family Absolutely. first. Absolutely. Yes. Well, thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, hear many similar stories and, again, with women um, not wanting to come out with the real their real life to sharing that, just even talking to someone, you can help someone else, mm -hmm. right? And um, so I, I appreciate you being very mm -hmm. authentic with that. And would not know, have known your story unless you shared it because it looks like you're living your best life. Hi. Let's just kind of make it a little fun now. Mm -hmm. Again, thanks for sharing your story. But um, if I could be your ultimate gift giver, like Oprah, you get a gift, you get a gift, you get a gift. Um, would you want a lot of gifts? A lot of little gifts or just one big gift? So it depends on who I'm getting the gift for. Um, like if I'm giving you the no, gift, yes. I'm I'm, I know, yes, but but see, okay. I'm a giver. Okay. By nature. Okay. Oh, so yeah. you give me something, mm. I think about what can I do with that and who does it benefit. That's just how I am. Mm. So it depends on if Oprah said I had three okay. options mm -hmm. or three choices or whatever the case may be. My first choice and my biggest passion, and this is going to really sound crazy, is I would want a building. 
A building? Yes. Okay. That's to the gift. Like... I'm putting that out there. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. <laughs> Throw it out in the universe. In the right. Universe, yes. <laughs> I've always wanted to have a building so that I can house people in that are in transition for their housing and to help them develop themselves, uh, whether it's to help them get a job or to help them start a business. So number one, that's always been part of my life that if I ever had a child opportunity and somebody gave me something, I would ask for the building. Okay, okay, okay. yes. Um, that's a big box. That's a, yeah. big, <laughs> a big box. Yeah. <laughs> Um, as far as me and my family, probably I would probably if somebody gave me something, probably money to to, to get there. I go to give out. <laughs> <laughs> to give out. I'll take some. To other <laughs> I would. I would get money. I would get some money, and um, be, yeah, I would probably get a, a couple, you know, Buckets. billions of dollars yeah. so I can Buckets pass it out. A couple yeah. billions. Love it. <laughs> Little things. If somebody was to give me something. I don't know. I'm not. I don't know. I'm not. I don't know. I'm not materialistic, so mm -hmm. it's, it's real hard for me to to say that if I can't share it. Yeah. Wow. It feels crazy for me to ask for something if I can't share it. Yeah. yeah. So health. I would ask for. Yes. Well, she can't give me health, but God could give me health. Exactly. And sustainability. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's awesome. what I would get. Awesome. <laughs> so I want to give you another fun fact question. Okay. Name your favorite toy as a child and why. Um, what was her name? The doll baby who, when you pull her hair, um, um, something thing. Oh, God, yeah. A baby a lot. Baby a lot. Oh. <laughs> what was baby Alive's name? She didn't have no name. She, she was just she called was baby. baby. We lived in the ghetto. You called the baby whatever it was on the name of the box. I was the baby <laughs> Baby alive, <laughs> and me and my cousin both had a baby alive. And that's not yours. This is my baby alive. We didn't. I didn't have a name for her. It was just baby alive, because you could comb her hair and pull it back. You know, you hit him thing and comb it again and put a little makeup on and get her clothes on her. Yeah, I yeah. that was really that was the yeah. best. <laughs> okay. Baby alive, yes. Well, as our time is winding down, it is. yeah, I, I have a question for you about your impact. You know, you've talked a lot about it from a different, a couple different perspectives. But if you could fast forward 20, 30 years mm. down the line mm. and look back over your life, what legacy would you want to leave behind? That's the key. Um, I want people to re and so I think one of the questions you guys had asked me before was, what do people in your family, how would they describe you? Yeah. So I sent a text out to my family. Oh, oh, I did. Oh, God. Oh, I did. Are you pulling that from the workshop? Nope. Okay, okay. I did it today. I said, listen, I'm getting ready to go do this thing, and I want to know what wow. you guys think. You know, three or, words, three or less words, because one of my cousins I knew was going to say something really crazy. <laughs> Had to keep it to a limit, right? <laughs> I was gonna say one word. I was like, nah. But to my surprise, um, I think the legacy that I want to live and the things that they're saying correlate. Mm -hmm. So I want to be remembered as somebody that was driven, determined, um, had tenacity, um, passionate, the person that was um, giving, caring. Um, what else did they say? They, I mean, they came out with these a lot of loud. <laughs> <laughs> My little cousin, she said, you're loud, but you're cool and you're passionate. Oh, so I was like, okay. Um, my nephew told me I was the one that keeps them together, the glue that keeps the family mm -hmm. together. So I, that's the legacy I want to le leave behind is those words, those kind of words. I want people to remember me, even in my work environment. I want people to remember me as an advocate. I said this one time when I was at the other event is that your passion shows up when you're young and you really don't realize that. Mm -hmm. yes. When I was five years old, I had a, a really good friend and she was... Um, the teacher had she, something she had done, and the teacher had grabbed her by her hair, and she started crying. I was, went home and I said, "Mommy, the teacher grabbed her by her hair," and I thought my mom was gonna come to the school, and she didn't. But I was like livid, and I said, "That is never gonna happen again." But she never came back. But I said to myself, "That's never gonna happen to, again to anybody else that I know." Mm. But I was five. Mm. I was five years old, and here I am now realizing that I'm advocating for people yes. at this stage. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes.
Yes, and with our beautiful soul. Oh, yes. 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 It's, it's been yes. such a joy and pleasure yes. having you, an honor having you on our inaugural I'm show, yes. The Real yes. Business yes. Women of Charlotte. And just thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And so, you being here and sharing what really works for women, talking oh. about mm -hmm. things like systems and finances, whether you're just starting out or maybe a few years in, that being so vital. Oh. You talking about you know, your your upbringing and the turning points in your life mm -hmm. and how those have really structured who you are and letting us know we need to embrace all of yes. who we are. Absolutely. And then confirming that with touching base with your family and saying, hey, this is my legacy. I <laughs> am driven. They do see that in me. They do see my passion. They do see that I have a giving nature. I think it has just been amazing for you to share all of that with us and all of our viewers who we really believe will get so much out of this. And Absolutely. I think I speak for everyone I say. Absolutely. We would love to have you back. Yes. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I would love to come back. Yes. I would really love to come back. Thank so you for nice. having me here. So it's so. <laughs> I love it. I love it. The power, the power of water. <laughs> Shape up, right? <laughs> Welcome to Empowers Activate. Uh, yes. Shape up. Oh, Chris, give me some. Yes. Yes, yes. please. Yes. Get in the building. I'll, I'll offer some communication. Uh, yeah. Yes. 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 And I'll come in and do my personal yes. development. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'll do my Evergirl wins. That's yes. right. Yes. Yes. Collaboration. <laughs> Collaboration yes. is the key. That is the key. Yes, yes. it is. You can't get anywhere yes. by yourself. Oh, you no, you can't. I always uh, tell people this is the way I look at collaboration. I don't do anything without collaboration. Um, you have two sets here. You have one that has you have one has one pie. You have one person has one pie, and you have three here that has one pie. Mm. Who's going to eat that pie faster? Mm. Think about it. Mm. So that's I've always thought that in my head, and that's how I describe collaboration. Nice. You're going to get further. You get it. Team. You do. Yeah. You really do. Mm -hmm. You do. I yeah. love it. See, the knowledge just keeps coming, y'all. Yeah. 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 So we invite you to come back, join our what YouTube channel, fun? share, mm -hmm. comment, yes. subscribe, and we will see you next month. Thank you for joining Thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you.